Hi everybody, what's going on? If you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have seen this live edge slab leaning up against the wall. Today we are going to make a bench out of this with waterfall edges. And I'm going to show you how to make these waterfall edges. We're going to use dowel pins to reinforce them. And this thing is just going to turn out beautiful. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. So due to the fact that there is nothing really square to start with here and there's no way to really find square what I've decided to do is just kind of work off of this edge right here because it looks pretty decent so I'm just going to slide my square up against it right here and pull it out where it's nice so it's flush across a majority of this bottom right here it just kind of kicks in a little bit down here and then I'm going to look across it and and I'm I'm pretty happy with that I'm okay with that so I think I'm just going to work off of this bottom edge right here just down about 10 inches so I'll pull my measurements from there up to establish a line here for my first cut I'm going to make this bench 18 inches tall so and I'm going to leave a little room here to run this through the table saw and get this cleaned up and get it real nice and make sure I can get this section squared up the way that I want. So let's get this a line on here, get our lines marked for our dowels, and then we are going to get it cut. What I've decided to do is use seven dowels over a 12 inch span, meaning one dowel every inch and a half. So I've got my 12 inches marked out on here but I need to extend this line a little bit further so that I can get it square and we're going to do that with our square so we'll get it set up here on our line now there's no way of knowing that everything is square and the reason I decided to go 12 inches is because the other end is so much more narrow than this end so what I want to do is extend this line out and I want to do the same thing here. Make sure you have a very sharp point on your pencil when you're doing this. And the reason that I need to lay these dowels out before I cut this is because nothing's square so I don't, I can't measure it afterwards and get exactly what I want to get these dowels laid out so I need to get some reference lines on here before I cut this now we're going to do the same thing here I've laid this out also as a reference because I'm going to have to make a jig to do these dowels I'm not going to drive the dowels through the top of the bench I'm going to actually put them in the angle the dowels will not be seen so that's the reason for also laying these out beforehand because the dowels will all be hidden in the joint Now that we got that done, I'm going to go back to my little ruler here, lay it out between these lines and make sure we're good. And we are. And I'm going to go ahead and mark them at one and a half inches. These need to be precise markings. So you need to take your time and make sure that your layout is good. So 
So now I'm going to do the same thing here. Now I just want to connect all of these lines. Now that the lines are laid out, each one of these represents the center of a dowel. So I have that lined out on both sides and I'll easily be able to transfer it down my angle cut to install these dowels and have them located perfectly. And then with my doweling jig laid on there, a part of it, you can see that the lines are lining up pretty good. This one's off just a little bit and it's going to need a little bit of tension. The rest of them are good. So because the slab is so long, I'm going to have to make these cuts with my circular saw and I'm going to put a guide on here to do so. But I just wanted to make absolutely positively sure that my saw was at 45 degrees and it's at 45.1. Um, it was at 45 a second ago. So I am pretty happy with that. That is going to be just close enough. This is the guide that I've clamped on here. And I've taken a couple of 2x4s and slid them underneath so that my cutoff does not fall to the ground. And we're ready to cut this. There we have it. That is some good looking nice purple wood in there, isn't it? So now this piece will go in the table saw and it'll get the angle cut on it on the opposite direction. And then the bottom of it here will get trued up to the 18 inches. This is actually 19 inches long right now, which is leaving me plenty of room here to get that cut off to 18 and get it squared up. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other end. And then we'll come back when we get this in the table saw. And then we'll explain the doweling jig and get everything going. The circular saw just wasn't able to give me the 45s as crisp as I needed them to be. They were slightly off. So I put the sled in my table saw and shimmed this plank up um, to hold it square or as square as I could off of the cuts that I had and basically just dress them a little bit. So now I have some nice tight 45 degree angles and now I can get on with the legs. Okay, I'm ready to run this through the table saw. This is one of the legs. The first thing I want to do is square this side up and I'm going to do that off of this side that I've already cut. Once I get that squared up, I'll flip it around, cut this 45 on it in the other direction and then I'll go ahead and cut it to length to the 18 inches. So right now I just want to take enough off to get it squared up.
get it laid out for the 45 cut. I know my table saw is tuned up. If you haven't watched my video, how to tune up a table saw, give that a watch. She's gonna cut exactly at 45 degrees for me. So now, what I wanna do, and it doesn't matter to me if I have to make a couple passes to get this done. I don't want to take too much and wipe away a lot of this and lose my grain matching up for the waterfall effect. However, I am missing it by quite a bit there. That looks pretty good. Let's cut it. So as you can see, I did miss it ever so slightly. One more pass and we'll get it perfect. That is some beautiful wood. So we'll just move it over a quarter of an inch. should be in business. However, I, I don't like the fact that I don't have any table right here, so I'm going to go ahead and make my table a little bit smaller. should get us there. and crisp 
that's what we want so I'm going to go ahead and take this down to the 18 inches and then we will be done with this leg as far as the cutting is concerned I just happened to pick up this little wedge that I cut out and it's the patterns almost perfect both sides kind of funny how that could happen actually kind of good looking all right I've got my table saw set up at 18 inches so we're going to go ahead and cut this leg down to the 18 finished we need to drill our dowels have to build a jig for that we'll get into that in a little bit but I'm going to get this other leg done and then we'll be back start putting some dowels in now that everything's cut I need to transfer these lines that we scribed on earlier to this side of the wood and then we got to get our jig made so we're going to transfer those lines by using our square and we're going to just line up on the top edge here nice and flush with our line just like that and then scribe the line on the other side just like that so I'm going to go through get all of these marked and then we'll get that dowling jig built. I've got the jig ready to assemble and I'll show you what I've got. This is the one by that I had earlier laid out that we saw. I cut a 45 on it while I had the table saw out. Earlier today I glued together two two by fours and I ran them through the table saw and cut them down to an inch and a inch and a quarter roughly somewhere in that neighborhood. And what I want to do is I want to attach this to this 2x4 so that then that will give me something to clamp my doweling jig onto. I'll get all my lines laid out on here and clamp them on. So let's get this put together. I just want to put a little bit of glue on here, not a bunch, because it's, it's not something I'm going to be using over and over for years to come. It's going to be just for this project. I'm going to get that set on there real nice. Now this is exactly 12 inches. This is the layout that I used. I'm going to take this little cutoff wedge and just kind of slide it in here to help me hold everything in place. I've marked it out here because what I don't want to do is put a brad in somewhere where um, it's going to mess me up when I try to drill a hole. I don't want to hit a bread. So we're just going to hold this real nice and tight. And get a bread in there. Come down here. Make sure we have good alignment. And do the same thing. Put one maybe here. Get one here. Think we'll be in good shape all right I'm gonna let this glue set up a little bit and I'll show you how this is gonna work I've scribed all my reference lines on my dowling jig and I've got it clamped to one of the legs and as you can see my dowling the, the other dowling jig is clamped onto this one and this way I can get a dowel straight in to that angle on both sides now you can, I suppose, buy a dowling jig that's already set up to do this. I looked a little bit online. They seem to be very expensive. For the little bit of time it took me to build this, hey, I'm going to go with it. I also have reference lines, reference lines down here. As you can see, we have good alignment. I'll check that on every one of them before I start drilling in the dowels. 
So this is basically ready to go. I'm ready to drill these dowel holes and I've got the collar set on my drill bit so that my drill bit is entering the wood just a little more than three quarters of an inch. The dowels are one and a half and I just want a little extra room. They are fluted dowels so any glue that gets in there can be pushed out. So we're going to go ahead and get some of these drilled. I've already drilled a couple. We're going to finish this leg up and I'm going to show you how we're doing that. We are using a 3 8 dowel, so we're set at 3 8 with the 3 8 bit, and this is a special bit with the starter tip on the end of it to help it get into the wood and not wander around in your follow grain in the wood. I don't like it that that just happened. Not super impressed with this doweling jig, but it's one of the few that I could find that was adjustable to the amount that this one is. around like that my battery's dying So there we have it. Those are complete. I'm just going to make sure that it lines up the way that I want it to. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Since the jig will have to be flipped basically to do the other side of the bench, what I want to make sure of is that when I drilled these like this, that when I flip it, that all the holes still line up exactly the same. So I've slid these dowels in here and I just want to make sure that each and every dowel slides into the drill holes like they're supposed to and then I'm not off. And of course, you know, it's going to be a little challenge to get them started. So there we have it and we look pretty good each and every one of them is in I don't see anything that looks um, out of the ordinary so I think we're pretty good to go with that I've drilled the dowels in the other side and I've got them tapped into the bench top with this just sitting on just to make sure for alignment and I am good so I'm going to get the dowels drilled in the other leg and in this side and then we're going to do a glue up pulled all my dowels back out and just put a little drop of glue in there not a whole bunch and what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and glue these surfaces up and get them together i'm going to have to move rather fast because i want to get both sides done and get the clamps on so i'm going to apply a liberal amount of glue get a little bit in these doll holes Just take my brush and start spreading it out. I'm 
make sure I get all the surfaces covered and get a really good glue up here. I'm going to make sure all your dust is off. There's no dust on the surface. do the same thing here I've put a little piece of tape on my bench so that I don't glue it to it it's important that you put glue on both surfaces when you're doing something like this it improves the strength greatly Mind just a little more glue right here. pretty happy with that we're gonna get her put together here Not quite as tight as I'd like to see it, but I'm going to get the other side and get the clamps on and get it pulled tight. Alright, I got both the legs glued on. I've got the clamps on. Wasn't expecting to have to put a couple of 2x4s in here, but the clamps were just too high because of the irregular shape of the bench. It's not like anything is square here. So, let me show you what we got. So I wound up having to put these 2x4s just to get the clamp out from the edge of the bench because it was just too irregular and it caused me to clamp so high on the leg that it was actually just kind of twisting them in. So I had to get my clamp pressure lower to get that nice and tight on the 45. So I look really good on both sides. I'm really happy with this. So. 24 hours and we'll be able to pop these clamps off and see what we got. 
I got the clamps off of it and I got it flipped over. It turned out pretty good. This side has perfect alignment. That side, the alignment is off by about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Not the worst thing in the world. Now what I want to do is go ahead and get this thing sanded smooth. And I'm going to do that with some 60 grit sandpaper on my orbital. And then I'm going to go over it with some 120. Let's take a look at the alignment. So as you can see, this side missed by just a little bit. Um, not the worst thing in the world. It still lines up really good. A little bit of glue mess here that will all sand off. A little bit of a, a issue here because this piece broke off when I was installing the end. There's not a lot holding it in place. Um, I glued it back into place. So if I wind up having to do a little puttying right here, I'm going to use this sand dust that I get from this material and mix it with a little glue to fill in any of these little imperfections that I may want to fill in. So it's looking really good. Let's have a look at the other side. I'm really happy with how a lot of this turned out. I will be kind of hand sanding some of this down to clean that up. But I'm, I'm really happy with the turnout. I'll clean just a little bit of this stuff up. And this side is actually perfect alignment. The lines matched up really nice. I think if I had to do it again, I would pre-drill the jig. The first holes that I drilled, I drilled through the jig and into here to put my dowels in. I think that if I had to do it again, I would have pre-drilled that jig. I think that's what caused me my issues on the other side. All right, I'm going to start sanding this thing. So I've got it sanded um, with just a 60 grit and I've got some of my sawdust here that I'm going to make a little wood putty with to fill up some of those issues. So I'm just going to add a little bit of wood glue to that and stir it up. I want to get about the same consistency that you would get with wood putty. So just a little glue at a time. I have some more over here in case I get too much glue. I can add in a little bit and try and get it the consistency that I want. And at least in doing this, I will get something closer to the color that I want it to be. I'm not planning on staining this. If I was planning on staining it, I wouldn't do this. I would go with a stainable wood putty. I'm just going to use a, a finishing wax on this. I think just a little more glue and we'll be in good shape. Not a bad looking wood putty at all. Smooths out nice. Now I'm going to fill these spots in. So I just want to get a little bit of this wood putty that I've made in these areas right here. I may hit some areas across the top as well. And I may have to come back over these and hit them again. Now 
Now these corners, I will soften these corners up a little bit and not leave them super sharp like this. get some on the other end and then uh, we'll let that dry and get it sanded. The wood buddy that I made is completely dry now. It's been overnight. Probably a little too long. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and sand this down with a fresh sheet of 60. There's still a little bit of stuff here and there like this that I want to get out. And then I'm going to turn it over in a minute here. We still have some fuzzing going on like right here and I'll show you how we're going to clean all of that off. I've already done some of it but I'll highlight a little bit of that so you can see how to get that fuzzing off. I'm going to get this sanded. So through here I still have some fuzzing that needs to be cleaned off and what we're going to do is just kind of scrape it with a pocket knife and get this stuff off as you can see. I don't want to take it all, but just so it no longer flakes off easily. And once I get it, the majority of it off, then I'm just going to come through with some 220 grit sandpaper. and just give it a light scuff to knock the rest of the fuzz away. I don't want to steal the character. I just want to get it where it's going to be finishable. So just like that, I'm going to spend a little time here and try and get a little better blend where this is messed up. I might put a little wood putty here and there to get a little better transition, but I, I like the character so I don't want to mess with it too much. But that's how we get rid of the fuzzing and I'll do the same thing down through here. Just get all this fuzzing off and then go over it with a little sandpaper and get it cleaned up. Don't be afraid to pick some of it out work on it a little bit. It's a live edge so you can't really muck it up and kind of is what it is and that's what you're looking for. So this is the area right here that was kind of ripped out. I've sanded a little bit. It had a kind of gouge hole in it right here. I filled with some stainable wood putty and it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. So I'm going to take a little bit of stain and I'm just using some dark mahogany here and I'm just going to draw some light lines on it and get a little blend and I'll sand this over a little more just to get a better blend I don't want to get too carried away I just want to get something that somewhat matches what is here so there's some heavier lines, so maybe I'll just get a nice little continuous line going through it. So once I sand that, it'll blend in really, really good with what's here and no one will ever know that it wasn't part of the natural coloring. I can even carry it out of it a little bit, give it a little better blend outside of the area. The entire bench is sanded. I sanded it with 60 grit and then 120 and then 220. And I went over and rounded some of the edges and smoothed some of the edges out a little bit. Um, I got most of the fuzz off, but there's still a little bit here, but we'll get it with the tack rag. So we're going to go over it now. I've already blown it off, but I just want to go over it with a tack rag and get as much of this stuff off as I can. And then we're going to go ahead and get this polish on it, the polishing wax. 
And as soon as I get this cleaned up, I'll show you that. I went over it twice with um, two different tack rags and now I'm getting ready to start installing the paste finishing wax. And all we're going to do is just hand rub it on and in about 15 minutes or so you can come back and buff it. You can buff it in multiple ways. You can buff it mechanically. You can buff it with a rag. Um, I'm going to opt to buff it with a rag. So I'm just going to be using these basically staining rags. Some people use cheesecloth. Some use others. This is a little different than the wax you would buy for your car. It's firmer and we're just going to spread it on there. It's going to give it that nice. This is a natural so it will have no gloss to it when it's done but it will have an amazingly smooth finish. You can see a big difference right there. So I am going to get this all rubbed in, get it flipped over, do the other side, and we're going to take a look at the finished product. The wax is on. It's been rubbed by hand, buffed lightly. As you can see, it has a little sheen to it. The waterfall edge on this side has turned out to be perfect alignment. The other side is off just a little bit, so we'll kind of do a walk around here so that you can see everything. This area right here is where I did the little stain touch up. Once we get back a little bit, you can notice that that blends in perfectly. It's looking really good. I'm very happy with this. This edge right here has a slight misalignment, as you can see. Not by much, about a sixteenth of an inch. No big deal. The leg has turned out very nice. I kind of like this little knot hole right here. And as we look down the back side, and I did go ahead and polish everything down here too, has wax. It's all been waxed inside, bottom, top. So I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Really happy with the grain. Just loving this. It's going to be a wrap for this time, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click on one of those two. They're going to pop up right there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.